the Lord, saints, and welcome to today's broadcast from the Solid Rock, featuring Dr. Herbert B. Robinson, Jr. We are glad you joined us, and we pray that today's message will be an added value to your life. Welcome, my beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to this segment of From the Solid Rock. Please join me in saying, my hope is in God, my trust is in God, my faith is in God. Please affirm that by saying this, I anchor my belief in God. God bless you. Please enjoy the message. Praise the Lord and welcome once again to From the Solid Rock. I'm certainly glad you could join us today. Hopefully things have been going well in your life. I've been praying for all of the listeners and watchers of this particular broadcast. I've been praying for your prosperity. I've been praying for your good health and for your well-being. I thank God for all of you who do tune in because as a result of you watching us, we ask that you would just hit the like button, if you will, or to subscribe to this particular broadcast so that you'll be notified when it comes on. We invite you to study with us and see what the Lord says through me. Uh, praise God. I'm not going to tell you that the Lord told me to tell you anything. I'm just going to tell you what the scripture says based on the way that I've studied it. Now, we thank God for our producer and the Bell Global uh, network and we thank God for all that they do and we pray for that chief executive officer Anton Bell fine young man who is going to be uh, well known in the near future so you just be ready to receive what God is going to bless you with through the Bell Global uh, Network and through the uh, broadcast from the Solid Rock all right now the last time that we talked praise God we were talking about Psalm 1 and we talked about how God had used David to write that particular psalm, uh, one, so that we might understand the difference between the righteous and the ungodly. And this book of Psalm, as we said before, is a praise book. It's a praise book for God to sing glory unto his name. Now, there are times when you do need to, as Lion of Family Stone said, sing a simple song. And one of the most simple songs that you could sing is, Oh, How I Love Jesus. That is one of the most simple songs that you can sing to praise God. Now, you may not find that particular song in this Bible, but what you will find is where David says that, um, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, who will bring forth his fruit in its season. And whatever he so doeth shall prosper. For the ungodly are not so, but like the chaff which the wind driveth away. And that the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, and neither shall the sinners stand in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the righteous, and the Lord knoweth the ungodly. I just paraphrase that psalm because there are so many different translations of the Bible out there that we can sometimes get confused. Well, if we just have some straight talk from the solid rock, it can alleviate a lot of confusion. There are individuals who quote and misquote scripture, but what I just did was paraphrased it. And I will say that I paraphrased what I read in Psalm 1. David lets us know that in this particular psalm, that it teaches us how to prosper here on earth. Prosperity seems to be one of the things that is most talked about in a lot of churches. There are people who go to church wanting to know, how can I become better? How do I become richer? How do I get out of this, 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 this situation of poverty? Well, you know, Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. And I'm of the firm belief that it doesn't have to be you. I remember that Reverend... Ike, 
once said, the best thing that you can do for poor people is not to be one of them. And this is where David tells you that you do not have to be poor. You do not have to be an individual that does not have money. This psalm starts off with the basis of how you can have a victorious life. I have a victorious life, and I want you to have one too. I thank God for the way that he has blessed me and the way he has kept me. And, 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 and some may think that my life is not victorious, but I seem to think that it is. I don't have everything that I want, but God takes care of my needs. And I don't sit around waiting for God to do things for me because God is already in me to motivate me and push me into my existence, to put me in the place where he wants me to be to get those things that he wants me to have. We have to work for some things. We can't expect God to be our errand boy. Stop thinking that God is going to show up your house in an Amazon.com truck. Stop thinking that God is going to just come walking up your walkway from UPS with a box just for you while you sit in your spiritual lazy boy with your feet crossed waiting on him to deliver. God is not your errand boy. God is the help that you need. God is the one that helps us because as David said in this Psalm 1, he says that that he that delights in the law of the Lord must meditate in it day and night so that you might be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of the water. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Now, will you continue to be unrighteous? My beloved, it's unrighteous to think that God owes you anything. It's unrighteous for you to think that you don't have to do anything and God is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. I know what the Bible says. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Shaken down in full measure and running over. And that if you tithe, that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing where you won't have room enough to receive it. But we're not going to take a whole lot of scriptures and make a collage by picking out what we want and what we like to determine what God wants us to do. David tells us right here in this text, he says that the Psalms teaches us how to prosper on earth and how to enjoy living even in the midst of evil. How is it that you can live in the midst of evil and enjoy it. God does things mysteriously. He does things in a way that we quite don't understand. But how do you understand God? I want to tell you right now. The first thing you must do is learn how to trust God. Learn how to trust God through prayer. There are a lot of you who don't want to pray. There's been some myths going around stating that the reason that we were thrown into slavery out of Africa is because we were taught to kneel and pray. And when we opened our eyes from praying, those who instructed us on how to pray had taken the land and had us in chains. My beloved. If you want to believe that, that's your prerogative. But the Bible teaches me that God had us praying long before slavery took place. And if you really want to know the truth, we were praying in Africa long before slave traders came there and put us in slavery. Read your history. We have been praying for a long time. So some say, well, why should we pray any longer? Well, some of us pray, but we don't trust God with our prayers. Does God answer prayer? Absolutely. Does God always answer our prayers the way we want him to? Absolutely not. Why is that? Because some things we don't know what to ask God for. The Bible teaches us that in the book of Romans. We know not what to pray for, 
but the Spirit gives us utterance. The Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. That's what the Spirit of God does because do we really know what we want? Do we really know what we need? We look at our flesh and we want new clothes. We want a new house. We want a new car. We don't have to worry about bills and we don't want to have to worry about that. What we want is just to have everything at our disposal. Well, I'm here to tell you that God is not an enabler. God is not going to enable you to have all those things. You not work for anything. Did you read the scriptures when Adam and Eve fell from grace and they were booted out of the Garden of Eden? Here they were living in a idyllic garden where all they had to do was tend the garden. All they had to do was relax and enjoy it and wait for the cool of the day when the Lord would come down and walk with them through the garden. Perhaps saying to them, okay, you all enjoying this? What else do you want? What else would you like? Is there anything you see here that you don't have that you might want? Here God was blessing Adam and Eve. He said, but of that tree of good and evil, that tree of knowledge in the midst of the garden, stay away from it. So what did Adam and Eve do? They went to the garden and they ate from the tree which God says not to eat from. As the Bible says, the devil cursed Eve into eating. That old serpent called the devil. Now, when you read the scripture, you will find that this devil was booted out of heaven for trying to overthrow the throne of God. He and one third of heaven were dismissed violently because there was a war in heaven. Praise God. In the book of Revelation, they were thrown out of heaven into the earth. Now, watch this. God didn't throw them out of heaven and into the Garden of Eden. He threw them into the earth. Because the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 2 that the earth was void and dark and the Spirit of God moved over the face of the deep. And then God said, let there be light. And so, my beloved, the devil was actually outside of the Garden of Eden while here on earth, talking from where he was to convince Eve against what God had said. God has not said that you would surely die. So Eve ate of the tree. And so, therefore, when Eve ate of the tree and then Adam followed eating after her, and then God came through and had to put them out of the garden, that's where sin came in. That's the nature in which we live in right now. Sin has driven us into the lows of life. However, God says you can still prosper here on earth, but you got to work for it. After they sinned, God gave out some instructions. He told that serpent, because you lied to them, on your belly you'll be for all your days. That's why some people say that that serpent was a snake. I don't know. I just know that God told that serpent that he would be on his belly for the rest of his days. He told Eve that she would be subject to her husband and would have to bear children in pain. And told Adam that you'd be subject to your family, meaning that you have to work for everything you get. You'd have to go over there and cut down the tree to build the house. You'd have to go over there and do some measurements so that the house would be sure to stand firm and not fall in on you and your family. You have to be a hunter and gatherer. I provided you with everything you needed in the garden, Adam. But now you've got to go out there and pick that fruit. Now you've got to go out there and pick it before it matures and rots. And so, my beloved, don't expect God to just come and hand you anything just because he promises us prosperity. 
No, there is something that you have to do yourself. You have to get out there and work for it. You have to get out there and make it happen. You have to go about your business on a regular basis. Now, if you want to go out there and play your numbers, thinking that that is what is going to give you what you need, let me tell you, you may hit the number once or twice, but even that too is a scheme. But who wouldn't want a windfall? But a windfall will run out. A windfall comes and it goes. Why do you think it's called a windfall? It comes in and it goes out. But here, God says you will prosper. And your leaf will never wither. When is that? He says it in verse 3 of Psalm 1. And I reiterate. And he shall be. He is you. Shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. But first you got to delight in the law of the Lord day and night. Can you do that? Can you pray day and night? Can you pray at midday? Are you disciplined enough? to pray on a regular basis. You ought to be if you're looking for this prosperity. He says here that you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You want to prosper? Trust God through prayer. That's all David is saying to us today. Trust God in prayer. That seems impossible. When billions and billions of people throughout history are praying, living, and dying, it just seems impossible that even if we all prayed at once, how does God distinguish my prayer from your prayer? If we're having a group session of prayer down at the local metropolitan arena, how do we know that God will know my prayer and not get it mixed up with anyone else's? And it just so happens that others are praying throughout the globe. How is it that God knows my prayers from theirs. That's when you trust God. You trust God with your prayer. Don't concern yourself about anybody else's. You might send up a prayer for somebody else. You might pray for somebody else. But don't confuse your prayer with someone else's. The Lord knows your prayer, but you've got to trust him to receive it. In this psalm, David, the writer, he, he gives us an opening statement on the contrast between the righteous and the ungodly people. Now, surely if God knows the difference between the righteous and the ungodly people's prayers, surely he will know the difference between your prayer and mine. You can pray with me right now and God will know the difference. We would seem to think, well, the ungodly would seem to think that there's no way that a God could hear all of our prayers. That's because they don't trust God. That's why they're ungodly. They don't know God. This lesson that David gives us isn't about, it isn't about saved and unsaved people. It isn't about believers or non-believers of God. But it merely talks about the righteous and the ungodly. The ungodly try to prosper without God. But God says you can prosper better with me. Why? Well, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the cattle on a thousand hills, they all belong to him. He'll bless you with whatever you want. If you study in his law day and night, so that you might become a tree, like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And the reason I say this is not about saved folk and unsaved folk, 
Because I've known some saved folk who are ungodly. What did you say, Brother Preacher? Saved folks that are ungodly? Absolutely. Well, years ago, and I'm glad you asked me, there were slave masters over slaves in America, over black slaves at that, who misinterpreted the word of God by saying that the Bible said that they were supposed to be obedient to their masters. That God had ordained for black folks to be in slavery. That the reason that Noah Cur the reason that black folks are in slavery is because Noah cursed Ham because Ham laughed at him when he was drunk and knocked out. Anybody who teaches you that and are saved, they are ungodly. As a matter of fact, they're not really saved as far as I'm concerned, but I'm not God. If God says they're saved because they've confessed him as their Lord and Savior, they've been baptized in his name, that's all well and fine with me. But I'm here to tell you right now, they are ungodly. They are ungodly when they judge us by the color of our skin. They are ungodly when they fly a flag for the home of the free and brave, but yet and still we have no liberty. We might have a few things, but, 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 but we're still trying to break glass ceilings. Some of those same saved folk will not let black people worship with them. And if you don't believe me, my beloved, if you're black like me, you go out to one of these churches out there with about four or five of your friends. And see how well you are accepted. See if they start clutching their purses and worrying about what you might do. We've even got some black folks who are saved and are ungodly. Yes, we do. Those who will go and misrepresent God's word to tell folk, honey, bring me your last and God will bless you. Honey, don't worry about paying your rent. You just bring me what you got and the Lord will bless you. That is ungodly. So yes, I did say it. There's some saved folk who are ungodly and that's why David talks about the righteous and the ungodly because just as there are some saved folk who are ungodly, there are some unsaved folk who are righteous. But righteousness don't get you into the kingdom. There are some people in some religions who live better structured lives in the religion that they're pursuing rather than the God in whom we serve. They eat right. They pray. May not be praying to the right God. May not be doing the right thing. But they're trying to live righteously. So David makes a distinction between the righteous and the ungodly. This is not about the saved and the unsaved. It's not about the believer and the non-believer. You want to know about being prosperous? God says, I can make that happen. I can make it happen with you. Don't you know that one of the worst people to know is a saved person who turns away from the faith? Somebody who was once born again and decided they didn't want Christ anymore. That they didn't want him in their lives anymore. Those are the worst kind of individuals that you could be around. Why? Because they can mislead you and tell you, oh, ain't nothing to that church. Oh, ain't nothing to that preacher. Ain't nothing to that praying and to that singing. But I've come here to tell you today that you need to trust God today. You need to trust God through your praying whether you kneel and pray, whether you stand and pray, whether you pray with your eyes open, whether you pray out loud or pray in silence, you ought to trust God today. There's one thing that I teach in the church that I serve. I've taught the people that you can pray while driving, you can pray while walking, you can pray while working, you can always find time to pray. And when you pray, you trust God. 
Trust that God will hear your prayer. Trust that God will answer your prayer. Trust that God will show you favor through your prayers. Because prayer, as I've heard my elder say, not only can change things, but prayer can make things happen. My beloved, it was prayer that brought us up out of Jim Crow. It was prayer that brought us up out of segregation. It was prayer that brought us the first black president in Barack Obama. It was prayer that brought us a Donald Trump as our 45th president to remind us that bigotry still does exist. And he brought all them folk out of the closet, didn't he? And some of them claim that they're righteous because they call themselves right-wing Christians. Right. Uh, right-wing Christians. But they are going to save the world from women aborting babies and having control of their bodies, from them niggers moving out into their neighborhoods and taking their jobs, and all they want out there is the Uncle Toms, the ones that they can control. Don't you be controlled by them. You be controlled by God. You be controlled by God because the God that I serve, he lets us know that we are blessed when we don't walk in the counsels of the ungodly. That's what David says. Blessed are you who do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You do not stand in the way of the sinners. You're not letting those kind of individuals who call themselves saved, but you know that they hate you. You know that they are ungodly. They don't need to counsel you. What they need is for someone like you to be righteous and pray for them. Pray for them so that you might prosper. Because the worst thing that you want to do it's have a saved person turn away from the faith because what they would do is make you unbelieve what you believe already. I believe I'm out of time. But I hope and pray that you do realize that you've got to trust God in your prayers. Do that for yourself, not for me. Because I trust God in my prayers. God bless you. We hope that you were blessed by the message for the day, and we look forward to you joining us again at the same time next week. Have a great life and be empowered by saying, I anchor my belief in God. Family, this is Bishop Marvin Sapp, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicki Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network.